Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the David Ike Dot Connector video cast. This week, message from the madhouse. Basically, we're going to cover lots of different subjects, but they're all going to kind of amalgamate into the fact that we are living in a madhouse. Before I introduce my dad, obviously I can see him already, and I want to assess um, the elephant in the living room, and that is the fact that I'm here like this, with the state of this barnet, and dad is looking very sharp. So, can you explain how on earth you've managed that, dad? Um, well, I got the chance purely by coincidence uh to uh, to have my hair cut and uh they said to me how much do you want off i said well as much as you can, as much as you can manage because i don't know when i'm going to get another one but i would like to um i would like to make the point because as you know um anyone that doesn't completely follow um government guidelines on the lockdowns i have always throughout the weeks um utterly and totally condemned so I would like to uh, make the point that uh, cutting my hair did not break uh, lockdown rules. Um, and uh, I'm going to use the same defense as, um, as Dominic Cummings, the um, Boris Johnson, British Prime Minister advisor, who, uh, who broke lockdown rules and um, is, um, as we speak, I don't know if it will continue, but as we speak is still in government and um, supported by the prime minister so um how did we do it well i, I just want to tell you uh, i want to tell the authorities as well because i'm terrified of them that um at no point did the person who cut my hair get closer than six feet and all i can say gaz is you should have seen the size of the bloody scissors <laughs> honestly mate they were absolutely freaking massive well about six foot Judge cut me hair like that, like scissors, you'd be, uh, um, um, you know, cutting the hedge with um, clippers. Um, and, uh, and so she never came um, any closer than that. To be really safe, I, I had a bucket on my head. And what we did is we, we stuck um, two plastic ears on the side of the bucket so that I could put a mask on the bucket. So that, that was safe. And uh, she had a bucket on her head, but she had two eyes cut in it so she could see to cut the hair like Oh, and my bucket, by the way, had the, the, the bottom cut out so my hair would stick up uh, uh, through the top so she could cut it. And, um, and uh, she had a gas mask on her bucket and uh, it, was, um, it was terribly safe. Um, I don't want to um, put anyone in any concern. It was absolutely safe. Um, uh, this uh, virus, which I say doesn't exist, was, um, was, had no chance of passing between us. So, um, so that's how I got my hair cut. It was... Um, it was a, it was a bonus this week. I tell you that. I can't wait to have mine done. Mine's ridiculous, and um, and uh, the grey and the uh, yeah. Never mind. Anyway, I'm not the only one who's looking rough. You seem to be the only one that's looking sharp. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, so, it um, it's been another week of um, of uh, kind of stupid attacks, of course, um, with uh, PayPal and uh, banning us. Um, I, I was terribly upset. I'd, I had to take some of bed. Uh, but, you know, one of the things that um, you, you see about these people, in all seriousness, is how tiny they are. They really are vindictive, tiny people. And uh, mum, uh, who um, has nothing to do with the books, has nothing to do with what I post on the internet, um, has um, also had her personal PayPal account um, deleted by these um, big brave people at uh, PayPal and um, all she ever did that uh, might in any way upset him was on my behalf uh, sent a donation to a 9-11 charity um, and um, apart from that it's just been used for normal things but um, she's had that banned so that, that's how tiny and uh, ridiculous and uh, well I'll, I'll say, I would say childlike except I don't want to insult children really. You, you mentioned in the in the subscribers video cast I was listening to it yesterday about obviously what they're trying to do is is the kind of the 1984 thing where they're basically non-personing you essentially they just almost want to just remove you full stop. Yeah um, it, it's what I think Orwell called it the unperson. That's it. You, you basically delete them from from all 
sign of existence. Uh, and uh, they're going down that road. Uh, they're going down that road with, um, with people who are exposing their ludicrous nonsense of a virus narrative, uh, which is unraveling <laughs> even among some mainstream people now. Uh, uh, but they won't. They won't um, because um, there are other forces at work, shall we say, that are much more powerful than them. And, um, you know, a lot of this that's going on, this banning them, banning me back from this, that and the other, it's actually panic. And it's a sign of their weakness, not their strength, that they think that they have to uh, do that to one guy um, on the, uh, or here on the Art of White when they, uh, they can control the entire system, basically, but they're still terrified of me. That tells you where the real power is. I, I must admit, I was sent a message, um, which even I couldn't believe. I was sent a message a few days ago by a friend of mine who'd said that they'd kind of were disgusted with the fact that, you know, you've been banned from left, right and centre. So they'd gone onto their Instagram and they've got quite a following and they'd written a, um, a little piece out and they'd read it to camera, you know, about their disgrace and that was deleted. So just the, yeah. men just the mention of your name. So like you say, it comes down to that whole kind of non-person thing. They just want to, to remove you. Um, or um, as, as we've had this week, um, we were contacted by a journalist um, who basically explained, to be, to be fair, Dad, at least he was honest. He basically explained he was going to write a hit piece, didn't he? For, do you know what I mean? He didn't bother trying to hide it. He basically said, we're, we're going to write a hit piece about you. And um, the, the, basically the background to it was that you're a multi-millionaire and you're just making a shed load of money off of misinformation um and the, the some of the the amounts of money he was quoting in that email i was scratching my head thinking where, where where's he plucked that from well um i think his name was his name william torville or turville william turville something like that um anyway um you know th there is this um constant targeting of me now by these all these powerful people oh i'm terrified uh because um i've said uh what so many uh other people have um, have thought but have not dare not said uh and that is not that the virus is caused by 5g um it's not that the virus came out of a wuhan bio lab it's that I say there is no virus and never has been, and it's all a fake, and I support that with a tremendous amount of background um, evidence, um, not least from uh, doctors, et cetera, who um, will never get um, into the mainstream media because of what they're saying and what they know. So that's the thing, that's why they're targeting me, because once you realize it's a scam on that scale, then the whole thing um, unravels and all bets are off in terms of the scale of human manipulation. So they've um, uh, tried you know, deleting me from uh, everything. And of course this, what's, his, what's he called? Countering or center for countering digital um, hate, which is dominated by activists from the Labour Party and funded by ultra Zionist foundations. Um, they have not only uh, claimed credit for getting me banned from Facebook and uh, YouTube with a, a, a million subscribers, not that they care less about their right to hear what they want to hear, um, but they've also, they're also uh, calling for um, all my videos, as you mentioned there, from any sources to be deleted from YouTube, and also called for people who've interviewed me to be deleted from YouTube. Now, that is, that is an absolute um, George Orwell, 1984 unperson um, agenda and uh, the other side of this is uh, to try to discredit me um, as a person and note guys they never want to debate me on what I'm saying never want to debate me on what I'm saying they just um, want to target me and, and discredit me so the other thing and I've had it all uh, before is that um, I'm uh, making uh, millions and millions of pounds a year well, what I'm going to do uh, at the end of this video is going to take people uh, on a, a, a quick a tour, bloody won't take long, of where I live and where I've lived for 20 years. And uh, this William Turville, whatever his name was, uh, I did ask him the question in reply. He's never, of course, answered it. Um, how come if I'm earning all these millions, uh, have I lived in a one bedroom flat for the last 20 years? And I'll almost certainly live out my years here 
So um, where is that? I work seven days a week. I have um, year after year after year after year and given current events, I will continue to do that. So where is the money? Um, why do I live in a one bedroom flat? And um, where, where am I gonna spend this money on? given that I work seven days a week. So, or, no, but none of these questions are ever addressed or, or answered by these people because it's just about discrediting me. And all they do, of course, is discredit themselves. Well, that's, that's another thing. They don't, they're not attacking the message. So the guy wrote in his, in his, in his email, you know, because of your baseless claims. It's, well, why are they baseless? What, what, what are you basing your assumption that they're baseless on? And- well, the, well, William's an idiot, um, uh, and he has no self-respect because um, what he does, he takes his um, alleged information from mainstream sources, uh, who all just feed the same stuff to each other, and um, and because mainstream sources say A, B, or C, then if someone like me is saying different, then they must by definition be wrong. Um, what he's not understood, or his colleagues um, around the world, is that a journalist's job is to question. The official story not to become a propaganda agent for it and, and I, I you know I did have a have a laugh really when I read um, where he said he got his sources from for this vast amount of money I suppose to be in um, uh, and they were vice I mean vice take yourself seriously man and um, oh the center for countering digital hate that has a massive agenda to silence me and discredit me uh, on behalf of those that own it. Uh, so, um, you, know, you, you, you know, you can get frustrated or you can laugh because they're pathetic and they don't deserve affecting you emotionally. Uh, they just deserve to be, to be uh, laughed at and also to an extent pitied because imagine waking up every morning and uh, your job is to be a propaganda agent for a system that is um, in the process of enslaving you and your children and your grandchildren like everyone else's. And you are playing a major part in selling that transformation and selling that enslavement, not least by targeting people who have the guts and the intelligence, they better look those two things up in the dictionary, um, to actually challenge this system. The, the, the funny thing about it is that, and the irony really, is that you've got a guy who's supposedly, I think he, he feels like he's some kind of, you know, maverick journalist or whatever. So what he's doing is he's attacking a bloke in a one bedroom flat for making millions whilst, whilst, whilst feeding the narrative that's been fed to him by a multi, multi billionaire. Yeah, exactly. It's, but but it's he ain't laughable. bright enough to work it out, mate. He ain't, he ain't bright enough to work that out. And, and there was, um, I won't get this um, absolutely word for word, but there's a great quote um, from the past where someone was saying that basically, um, uh, if your income depends on something, you're most likely to, to, to believe it. Uh, and of course, uh, these mainstream journalists only continue to be mainstream journalists and uh, pay their mortgage from that um, source um, because they will be, uh, unquestioning propaganda agents for the system that owns their media operation. So, you know, you, you just have to um, realize what you're dealing with and just let it go in one ear and out the other. And, you know, I mean, you know, I've not had experience of being attacked and abused and lied about and ridiculed and have, I, I've had no experience of it. It's all new to me, of course. It's, it's interesting then moving on. So obviously you've just said there, like, you know, if you're, if your income, look at the state of this barn. I can't believe you've had air cut. Um, if, 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 you know, if your income depends on it, you're more likely to agree with it, or even in, in a lot of cases now agree to it. Um, so I want to talk now about the test and trace stuff. Um, what they're selling test and trace to be is that this is going to get us out of lockdown quicker. This is going to get you back to work. This is going to get you money. It's going to feed your family again. And it's all this kind of fear and manipulation to make people think they have to do something when it's obviously it's a lot more than that. Yeah, well, it's, it's a classic, um, uh, what I've been calling since the 1990s, problem, reaction, solution. Um, you, you create the problem, which is lockdown. And I'm going to come to that because, um, you know, the whole ethos of lockdown is, is, is unraveling before our eyes. Um, you create lockdown and you say you can't come out of lockdown fully um, unless you do ABC. 
And so it's basically um, threats and intimidation that we're dealing with. Because we're dealing with, a, we're, we're living in a fascist state. I mean, don't let's beat about the bloody bush here. Britain's a fascist state currently. So is the United States. And so are all these other countries that have imposed these uh, uh, lockdowns and uh, tell the country that um, they, uh, they can't uh, come out of them until they do what the authorities um, want. And so in Britain, we've had this uh, start of this test and trace system. And uh, just a, a quick story uh, on the background, a massive system to find people who come into close contact with those um, infected with coronavirus will start in England on Thursday, yesterday. Uh, Boris Johnson has said, the Prime Minister said it will change people's lives, but that's exactly what it's meant to do. This is the new normal they're talking about, which means an absolutely massive advance on human control and dictatorship. Of course, it would change people's lives, Mr. Johnson, who's um, fronted up, and that's all he's done for the uh, unelected dark suits who are driving this. The aim of the test and trace system is to move from lockdown for all towards more targeting measures. What, I mean, I mean I'm like an Orwellian translation unit here. Uh, what that means is we put you under lockdown, we've destroyed your livelihood, um, and uh, we've acted like fascists. Um, and for that to be eased a little bit, um, you have to um, accept being tracked 24 seven and other things that um, come from that, as I'll come to. As is currently the case, anyone who develops symptoms of coronavirus, a persistent cough, fever, or a sudden loss of taste or smell, will have to isolate for seven days and the rest of their household for 14 days. Now, they've added the um, taste uh, of, uh, and uh, loss of taste and uh, sense of smell. They've added that to the symptoms and they're gonna go on adding symptoms because the more symptoms they could say are, are this COVID-19, uh, COV-2 stuff, um, the, the, the more people they can say have uh, the symptoms. So um, uh, next week, if you, if you burp twice in 30 seconds, um, that is going to be a symptom of COVID-19. And apparently they, in the midst of this test and trace system, that they're going to be distributing uh, stopwatches so that we we can test that. That's me uh, screwed then, Dad. That's me screwed. That's me screwed then. Yeah, uh, we are, yeah we all know about that, guys. Uh, but um, so we're in this uh, situation um, where uh, we are in fantasy land. Uh, it says here uh, the difference from yesterday. Everyone with symptoms should ask for a test online or call to arrange a test by calling 119. Now, this is a test I've been pointing out, people like um, the American doctor Andrew Kaufman have been pointing out for so, so long in this uh, whole uh, nonsense, the, uh, and others too in the medical profession. This is a test that's not testing for COVID-19, but it, if you test positive for a test that's not testing for COVID-19, then you become subject to all this. Um, if the test comes back negative, everyone in your household can go back to normal. Oh, thank you. How kind. Uh, but if the test comes back uh, positive, the National Health Service test and trace team uh, will get in touch. This is the, uh, the emerging Stasi. Via text, email or phone call to discuss whom you have come into close contact with. Well, it'll be a short bloody conversation if they call me. Um, any of these contacts deemed at risk of catching the virus will be instructed by the National Health Service to go into isolation for 14 days, whether they are sick or not. Um, Health Secretary Pratt Hancock um, told the Daily Dowling Street briefing, this must become a new way of life. This is the new normal that, that moronic people like Hancock are acting as the vehicle for imposing on 66 million people. The same is happening all around the world in other countries. And it will require a national effort. Otherwise, lockdown would have to continue. Here you go. This is the threat. This is the intimidation. It's our civic duty. So uh, you avoid unknowingly spreading the virus and you help 
to break the chain of transmission. It's our civic duty, Mr. Pratt Hancock, to pursue the truth and to expose the lies of people like you. And some of us are doing it seven days a week and will continue to do so. Now, I want to put that, what you just heard into a series of contexts. This is a story from this week um, about the CDC in America, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, uh, which confirms extremely low COVID-19 death rate. Um, I would say it's extremely, extremely, extremely low, like zero personally, but that's my, that's my view on the basis of my evidence. Most people, it says the story, are more likely to wind up six feet under well, at least there'll be social distancing, guess, um, because of almost anything else under the sun other than COVID-19. And on this basis, that is being imposed and all that, that's gone with it. The CDC just came out with a report that should be earth shattering to the narrative of the political class. Yet it will uh, go into the uh, thick pile of vital data and information about the virus that is not getting out to the public. For the first time, the CDC has attempted to offer a real estimate of the overall death rate for COVID-19. And under its most likely scenario, the number is, oh, wait for it, 0.26%. Not 0.26 percent. Now, and I'm going to come to that in a second, you look at the monumental numbers of death certificates that have been said to um, the, the cause of death to be COVID-19 when it was absolutely not and something else. Take that away from the 0.26 percent and you will be left with a little round number. Officials estimate a 0.4% fatality rate among those who are symptomatic and uh, project a 35% race of a race of asymptomatic cases among those infected, which drops the overall infection fatality rate to just 0.26%, almost exactly where Stanford researchers pegged it a month ago. Until now, we have been ridiculed for thinking the death rate was that low, as opposed to the 3.4% estimate of the Gates-owned World Health Organization, which helped to drive the panic and the lockdowns. Now the CDC is agreeing to the lower rate in plain ink. And you only have to put these last two stories together uh, that I've just read to realize uh, the nonsense, the insanity that's going on here with um, if you if you don't accept that, there, you know what I'm saying, that there is no virus and you accept that there is a virus, which is your right, of course. Um, but even if you do, that's the kind of death rate numbers. And yet the world is being transformed on the basis of that. If ever there was a scam written 2,000 feet high, then it's um, that. You know, I was, I was listening to a, a sports station briefly this week, and the, the news came on, sports news. Um, I actually turned it on just to, out of interest to see what they were talking about all these kind of weeks when there's been no sport later. Um, and there was this uh, kind of ominous delivery. Ooh, what's happened? Um, a, a Bournemouth uh, football club goalkeeper had been um, found to have COVID-19. So I thought, well, he hasn't. So let's, let's listen to the story, see where it goes. Turns out he's been tested for COVID-19, which footballers are all the time, apparently, but with a test that's not testing for COVID-19. And he, he was positive two weeks before he... Um, He'd be negative. And he said, well, the only thing I could think of is I must have caught it in the supermarket. What? Six feet apart from everybody else. Have you been in the supermarket? So this test, test positive, test negative. It, it's a joke. So anyway, I listened to this story. 
And I'm thinking, okay, what's wrong with him? He's got to isolate for seven days. Okay. Uh, so um, how is he? Oh, said the goalkeeper. I've got no symptoms. I feel fine. And then another story came on. I think it was a Blackburn Rovers player who tested positive for COVID-19 in a test that's not tested for COVID-19. And um, he was asked how he felt. He said, I've got no symptoms. He said, I've never felt better. He says, I've just done a fitness test and got my best score ever. <laughs> and he's just tested positive for this deadly disease. This is the utter insanity that we're living uh, amidst. Uh, hence, message from the madhouse. Now, another story, I saw it's only this morning, but it's a really telling story going on from what I've just been talking about. And it's by um, a British doctor working in the National Health Service. Now, quite a few doctors in places like the United States have come out, of course, been deleted from YouTube when they have. Um, but th this is the first one who's really gone for it, really gone for it in, um, in, in Britain. Uh, when I say gone for it, just simply told the truth. And if you go to davidike.com, Oh, and by the way, is the new davidike.com uh, website uh, being launched on Monday. Um, if you go to davidike.com, um, you'll see uh, today um, a, um, a video um, ex uh, explaining um, how someone has compiled hundreds of postings on social media, whether they be doctors, whether they be loved ones, family, um, pointing out that people have been, from their personal experience, uh, falsely designated to have died from COVID-19 when they haven't died from that at all. It's an epidemic, that, the death certificate scam all over the world. So this is another story, um, which is, I think, very powerful in some of the things he says. Um, I've signed death certificates during COVID-19 Here's why you can't trust any of the statistics on the number of victims. Um, it's by Malcolm Kendrick, a doctor and author who works as a uh, general practitioner uh, doctor in the National Health Service in England. And he says this, as an NHS doctor, I've um, seen people die and be listed as a victim of coronavirus without ever being tested for it, even by the ludicrous test that's not testing for it. But unless we have accurate data, we won't know which uh, was killed, uh, which has killed more, the disease or the lockdown. Well, try the lockdown because we see nothing yet. Mostly, however, out into the in the community, death certification is certainly not an exact science, he says. Never was, never will be. Then along comes COVID-19 and many of the rules, such as they were about death certificates, went straight out of the window. I wonder why. At one point, it was even suggested that relatives could fill in death certificates if no one else was available. Um, though he says, I'm not sure this ever happened. What um, were we now supposed to do, he asks. If an elderly person died in a care home or at home, did they die of COVID-19? Well, frankly, who knows? Especially if they didn't have a test for COVID-19, which is not testing for COVID-19, which for several weeks was not even allowed. Only patients entering hospital were deemed worthy of a test, no one else. Was every person in a care home now to be diagnosed as dying of the coronavirus. Well, that was certainly the advice given in several parts of the UK and around the world. I, this is a, this is a, um, a real uh, big uh, statement he's made here. Um, I do know that other doctors put down COVID-19 on anyone who died from early March onwards. What a statement that is about the nonsense and irrelevance of the, uh, the numbers that we're being given 
both for cases with a, a test that's not testing for what they say it's testing for and in the death certificates leading to the alleged death um, numbers. Um, I didn't um, put it on death certificates, he said. What can be made of statistics created from data like these? And does it matter? Well, it matters greatly, he said, for two main reasons. Firstly, if we vastly overestimate deaths from COVID-19, we will greatly underestimate um, the harm caused by the lockdown. But of course, that's the idea. They want to um, increase the, uh, in every way possible, the perceived um, number of deaths from, quote, COVID-19, but they want to uh, limit um, exposure of all the deaths that have come and will come from the lockdown. And people not having treatment, not having diagnosis, being so terrified of, 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 of this, quote, virus, that they won't even um, go to hospital to see what's going on with their health when they have a problem. So um, this doctor says, we know that accident and emergency attendances have fallen by over 50% since lockdown. Admissions with chest pain have dropped by over 50%. Did these people just die at home? Yeah, and COVID-19 went on their death certificate. From my own perspective, he said, I've certainly found it extremely difficult to get elderly patients admitted to hospital. We talked about this in these um, video cast gas at length about how um, the, 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 this uh, assault on, on old people, uh, which has led to so many deaths of old people, not from COVID-19, but by the way they've been treated in this lockdown. Um, he said, um, I've recently managed with one old chap who was found to have sepsis, not COVID-19. Had he died in his care home, he would almost certainly have been diagnosed dying from COVID. This is a doctor working in the National Health Service in Britain. The bottom line, he said here, is that if we do not diagnose deaths accurately, we will never know how many died of COVID uh, or because of the lockdown. Those supporting lockdown and advising governments can point to how deadly COVID was and say we were right to do what we did. That's another part of the scam. Um, when it may have been that lockdown itself was just as deadly, uh, and then some, directing care away from everything else to deal with a single condition, keeping sick, ill, vulnerable people away from hospitals. And he said, if COVID-19 killed 30,000 and lockdown killed the other 30,000, then the lockdown was a complete and utter waste of time. And it should never happen again. The great fear is that this would be a message this government does not want to hear or any of the others around the world. So they will do everything possible not to hear it, which is why they've deleted my videos. It's why they've deleted uh, videos of doctors saying um, similar things. And finally, it will be decreed, this doctor says, that all the excess deaths we have seen this year were due to COVID-19. That escape route will be made far easier if no one has any real idea who actually died of the coronavirus disease and who did not. Yes, the data on COVID-19 deaths, he says, really uh, matters and it's because it matters for a whole range of reasons that it's being manipulated and scammed and and before anyone says oh it's a conspiracy theory Patrick Valance the scientific advisor to the Johnson government on this who was an executive of GlaxoSmithKline that's big time involved in the vaccine and big time involved with Bill Gates he actually said at one of these daily briefings, as they call them, that um, just because people die, uh, 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 have COVID-19 on the death certificate don't mean or doesn't mean that they died of it. Now, just inwardly digest that statement and put it through a, um, a filter for ludicrousness.
Yeah, he even added on to that as well, the, because the, the overwhelming number have not been tested. Um, yeah. It's, it's madness. It, it draws me back. Like when you were talking about that, like what that doctor's come out and said, it just made me think. I saw a video a little while ago um, of Bill Gates, and he's um, kind of recommending these books to read. And there's, I think it's about six books he's recommending. And one of them's called How to Lie with Statistics. And I'm just thinking about that now, and I'm just thinking this guy's just taking the piss. Yeah, yeah. Well, they, they are. They're laughing at us. They're laughing at us. All these, this social distancing and you, you can have one person there and you can, can't go there and you, or you're going to have two people there. It, they're laughing at us. It's all a psychological, um, uh, uh, well, psyop. Uh, and, but it's got so ridiculous that even some members, some, some members of the um, mainstream media are calling it out. This is a, a, a very good article by uh, Shirelle Jacobs uh, of the this columnist on the Daily Telegraph in Britain. And the headline is, the lack of evidence lockdowns actually worked is a world scandal. And anyone that's been, you know, following what I've been saying about this from the start will know that at the start, I said, this is not about health. All this, all this lockdown, all this uh, hysteria, it's not about health, it's about economics. It's about destroying the independent livelihoods of the population so they become dependent on the state and have to do what the state says. And, and, and from the start, it was obvious that the lockdown was about economics and not about health. So um, the lack of evidence lockdowns actually worked is a world scandal. There is, not a, uh, there is still not a shred of real proof that the planet's reckless stay at home experiment made any difference, it wasn't an experiment, it's cold calculation. Uh, we have detonated, she says, the global economy to pursue a lockdown experiment that may not have worked according to the latest evidence. This diabolical revelation should be a world scandal. Well, try telling that to YouTube and Facebook and the rest of the mainstream media, apart from people like her. Um, it should also be a sobering moment of enlightenment for Britain as we seek to salvage our economy while learning lessons on how to better protect the vulnerable. Instead, the COVID narrative becomes ever more surreal. The more your lies are unpicked, the bigger the lies you're going to tell. So the more surreal it becomes. The broadcast media is more interested in scalping lockdown flouters than um, questioning whether shutdowns have served any useful purpose. My question after the last few weeks is, does the broadcast media in the mainstream serve any useful purpose, apart from being propaganda agents for the uh, official narrative of everything? She says world class studies that suggest lockdown did not alter the pandemic's course are mysteriously vanishing into internet obscurity on first contact with the official narrative. Why? Because the people behind the pandemic hoax, the people behind the World Health Organization, the people behind Bill Gates are the same people behind the Silicon Valley um, giants that are censoring on behalf of the official narrative. Just a few more quick headlines sir, before we, we move on. Japan, no lockdown necessary. Uh, they did not lock down. They've just called off their state of emergency in Japan with um, a, 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 an official death toll, I think it was 851. Um, uh, doctors here are saying um, in this story, lockdowns will call, cause more deaths than uh, the alleged virus. Another story uh, from a Nobel laureate um, scientist, lockdown is a waste of time. Another one, social isolation increases risk of death by 50%, which uh, supports what we talked about earlier. And another story from a, a doctor talking about California, there have been more suicide attempts each month during this lockdown in California than in an entire normal uh, year. So the things that uh, I've been talking about since this pandemic started um, and what it was all about and what the consequences would be are all now coming out to be exactly um, what has happened. 
I um I shared that story um about the Californian uh, doctor um, and the suicide, and I got a couple of well, if that was happening everywhere, we'd hear about it. You know, people have that uh, mindset that the mainstream media is going to tell them the truth. And a friend of mine just commented straight away underneath saying, well, I know five people. And I was like, oh, my God. And then a friend of uh, Kerry's that you've actually met before, she said, well, I know two. And it's like, the, 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 OK, this isn't like a news story. This is I know that person and they're dead now because they took their own life during this. Um, you know, that's real. It's, it's, it's insanity. And just quickly, the before, people, before you're talking about, guys, the people you're talking about um, uh, who, who just try to poo poo. Um, any challenge to the official story, um, the, the scale of software mind, press center mind that um, they must have is, is just shocking to me. And what we've seen in this whole uh, period of this draconian um, fascistic lockdown is um, something I've been talking about for years, which is the parting of the ways between those who have um, uh, the ability to think for themselves, and, and, and this has opened the minds of lots of people that weren't open before, and those that are so totally and utterly uh, programmed in their perceptions that they childlike um, peer up to mummy and daddy authority to, um, to find out anything. Um, that the, the, the difference between the two, this parting of the ways, is becoming so um, uh, more extreme and, and obvious, where some are going uh, deeper into the coma and others in ever greater numbers are coming out of it. Yeah, and, and that's what I think is, is the thing to cling on to. I, I've seen quite a lot of it, you know, people waking up and we need strength in numbers. That's what it's all about, mass non-compliance and before we move on to quickly just go back ever so slightly with the test and trace i've actually i've disabled on my phone um the automatic updates because okay you have to download the app but i am sure further down the line when people don't download the app because they don't want to um and they make it mandatory which is actually what matt hancock said he said that we're asking people to do their civil duty um but if they don't then we'll make it mandatory well it's mandatory anyway then isn't it yeah, of course it is. Um, you, yeah. see this with, you see this with everything, mate. Um, it, it's, it's voluntary as long as you do it. And if you don't do it, then it's mandatory. It's it, it's it, oh, the patterns keep repeating. Exactly, exactly. So I've disabled that. So when they inevitably try and do it as an automatic update, it can't do that. I've shared a video on how to do that on, on my Twitter, actually. Because um, I was just thinking about test and trace. Like you can say I've got, say I've got it on my phone there then all they, all they need to do to target an individual is say, oh, yeah, someone was near you. So they can, they can, pick, they can pick who they put under house arrest for, for two weeks. Oh, he's, he's doing this, he's doing that, bang, you're in your house because someone's been near you. And, and I don't trust them to not do that. So balls to having that shite on my phone. Um, yeah, that's exactly, exactly the point. It's a free for all for authority to target anyone they choose. Well, they're going to have a real big problem um, tracing me um, with their app because don't have a mobile phone. I don't carry a mobile phone. So um, that will be uh, interesting the way they're going to try to do that with me because I ain't going to carry a phone. Never have, never will. Um, except in the rarest of circumstances I've explained before, um, which is about once every six months. Um, I don't carry a phone, so trace me if you can. They'll, well, they'll probably send out a drone for you, but they'll have to keep updating it because you keep getting your air cut. Um, <laughs> no, but, no, no six foot scissors, mate. So moving on, early doors in this, um, we commented about at the time how it seemed that only celebrities and famous people that are involved with the cult seem to be getting it. Um, and one of those people was, was Prince Charles. Um, yeah. And we had a conversation, you know, did he have it, didn't he have it? And obviously let, further on, we've gone, we've realized that there was bugger all for him to have anyway. He's now pushing what he says is a reset, which just sounds like Orwellian language to me. Yeah. Um, Prince Charles is, is, is big time part of this cult. I mean, uh, I mean, I've been exposing that and the British royal family in my books for decades with, with their connection to this cult. So um, it's no surprise that Prince Charles should come out and demand a reset of human society. 
um, because he wants to put people first, which will be a first for him, funnily enough. Um, he um, lives off the backs of um, the population, uh, purely by bloodline, and, um, and now suddenly he wants to put people um, first. No, he doesn't. He wants to put the cult agenda first. And if you look at what the climate change, human caused climate change hoax, what I call the climate cult, is demanding in terms of um, change in society. And you look at what is demanded for change in society as a result of this um, pandemic hoax, then you're looking at basically the same transformed society. So it makes sense, and my God, is it true, that the same force, the same cult that's behind the pandemic hoax is behind the um, human caused climate change hoax. This is why they have to fix the data for the climate change uh, um, claims and propaganda has been exposed many times. And they also have to fix the data for the pandemic, because if you haven't got a virus and you haven't got a human caused climate change, the only way you're going to make it appear so is to fix the freaking data. This is why they're doing it and have to do it. Um, and so, again, it's not a shock to find that the climate cult, people like Prince Charles, who've been wrong so many times in predicting, you know, we've only got so long just keeps moving on, like all cults. You know, when you say, you know, the end of the world's coming uh, uh, with this cult and it doesn't, you just, you just throw the date a bit further forward. This is what they do. So, because um, it's cult. So he's now saying we must have this research and this climate cult in general is saying that we must use this opportunity presented by this pandemic, uh, claimed pandemic, um, to transform human society to save the planet. So, and, and why are they doing that? Because the two are connected. Um, so I've got this story here um, from this week. Um, Prince Charles to launch Great Reset project to rebuild planet in wake of coronavirus. Um, in the image of the 1%. So it's no surprise that he's doing it with the 1%. Uh, the Prince of Wales, um, well, that, these stupid bloody titles they have, eh? Oh, he's the Prince of Wales. Oh, I'm terribly impressed. The Prince of Wales will call on world leaders. Oh, I don't think he'll have to call very loudly or very hard. To capitalize on the unique but narrow window to put the planet and people first in the wake of the coronavirus pandemic as he launches a great reset project. What is that, Charlie boy? the great transformation of human society project that I've been exposing was coming for 30 fricking years and your involvement in it. The Prince is to co-host an event with the founder of the World Economic Forum of the 1% massively connected to Bill Gates and the Gates Foundation to bring about a green recovery, encouraging businesses and politicians to ensure they build back better well, let's get rid of the royal family, eh? That'll save us a bit of money and people first, we can distribute that to people struggling for jobs now. Charlie boy, what do you think? Oh no, we mustn't be affected. It's, it's not even laughable, it's pathetic. Um, the prince who was long advocated for climate change and the health of the planet, on behalf of the 1% and the cult he represents. Uh, once it placed at the heart of the uh, economies uh, and will work with Klaus Schwab on the event from the World Economic Forum. Klaus Schwab, you'll be staggered to know, has been uh, mentioned a number of times in my books over the years. Um, and uh, it is intended to build sustainable uh, markets initiative launched by the Prince in Davos, home of the World Economic Forum and the, of the 1%, to accelerate the global transition to sustainable markets and decarbonization. So they've taken uh, one hoax and they're using it to justify another hoax. And that's where and how 
this cult works. And if people want to take themselves seriously, and anyone watching this video will be doing so, um, they need to start um, looking uh, for other sources of information. Why do they think, why do people think they're trying to delete other sources of information? Because it's the freaking truth exposing the mendacity of people like Prince Charles and uh, Gates, etc. And while it's still around, people need to look at it and find out and realize that there is another way of looking at the world that's different from people in dark suits who are uh, parroting an agenda and different from the mainstream media that are parroting that same agenda and different from the narrative of Silicon Valley, which is parroting the same agenda. And why are they doing that? Because ultimately, from the shadows, they're all controlled by the same force. When, um, when CNN dragged out Greta Thunberg to commentate on the coronavirus, that was pretty obvious then that, that the two were, were connected. That was the start of this movement, which is, which is now um, gathering pace as, as, as uh, this moves on to uh, justify the climate change agenda by the pandemic uh, agenda. And you've got Joe Biden, it's almost certainly going to be the uh, Democratic candidate against Trump, um, who's uh, named um, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez uh, to co-head um, basically his climate energy uh, um, team. And uh, she is the face of the Green New Deal in America, which is the climate cults um, legislation um, plan to transform human society into a centralized dictatorship, which is exactly how the pandemic is being used to create the same. Right, so to finish then, wh where does Prince Charles live? Where's his base? Can you remember what palace is his? Uh, isn't it Clarence House where he lives? Clarence House, go on then, right. So let's see if Clarence House has anything on your house. Oh, I wondered why that question came in. <laughs> okay, so what I'll do, because I earn all these millions, right, a year. I know that's a fact, because they, they say in the mainstream media I do. Um, so um, this is where I've lived for 20 years. Let me take this, um, this thing out, because if I don't, um, it's gonna be a problem. Um, I've lived here for 20 years, and uh, we'll probably live out my, my days here. So I'm gonna take you. This is like MTV Cribs, this is. It is, yeah. Well, I, I wouldn't know. I never watch MTV. But um, I'm, where I'm, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you um, as best I can. This is my office, right? Um, a tiny place. And this is how I, um, uh, where I write all the books and where I uh, do all the videos and the interviews. So we're going to come out here now. This is the, 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 um, the hall. I'm trying to get the picture right. Here's the hall. And uh, here's my bathroom. There you go. Very nice, very feminine. Very feminine, yeah. That's Nancy Nono's, by the way, um, which I got for my granddaughter. Um, Nancy Nono's. Uh, people say to me, how does she smell? And I say she smells all right, actually. Very nice. Um, so that's, um, that's my bathroom. There you go. And then we come back into the hall. And this is the front door. Are you seeing this all right? You better guide me on this, guys. Yeah, no, I can see it. Fine, yeah. That's the front door. There's you and everybody. And by the way, here, this is um, a shirt signed by all the players from the Leicester City squad that um, won the Premiership a few years ago, thanks to a friend of mine, Jim. And we come round here, and this is my front room, where I don't spend an enormous amount of time. It's mostly spent in the office, actually. Uh, that's that. And so now we're going to, we're going to, um, rewind down the hall and we're going to go see my kitchen. Here it is. Massive. Look at it. Massive kitchen. And, uh, finally my bedroom. There you go. Not a lot goes on in here, <laughs> uh, except sleep. Um, and so, um, we'll come back around here and we'll go back where we started which is um, in the office, and you have just been round my mansion, um, where, and on which, I've spent 
my um, billions of pounds, or millions of pounds, sorry. Well, it could be billions by the time they finish. Millions of pounds. Um, and what they, what they can't grasp, let me put this power thing back in here. Um, what they can't um, grasp, understand, because a lot, a lot of this stuff is projection. I mean, obviously, there's, they're trying to discredit me, but um, a lot of this is projection because they would never give their life for 30 years to try to uncover something that um, had to be stopped to um, retain any form of human freedom. They would never do that. So because I've done it, I must be doing it for another reason. And oh, it must be money. And the other thing that um, they, um, they can't grasp or choose not to is that for 30 years, I've been saying what we're now experiencing was coming and that it was all planned and they still can't grasp it. The only thing they can do is try to discredit me. But, um, you know, they can do what they like. Boom, 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 boom. I'm still coming for you. <laughs>